Hey guys, it's Summing Rush. Today I've got a KV2 replay for you. This is by KK2310, and this is actually the very first KV2 replay I featured on my channel. Now, KK2310 has a three marked KV2. He's actually a solid player, and he finds himself on the map Siegfried Line for this one. Now, Siegfried Line, it's encounter, and so the cap circle is actually on the nine line, kind of in the E9 area. And what he's going to do to start off is he's going to start off by taking his tank to the city. Now, as he's driving over there, you can see there's T T20 on the map spotted by a Hellcat. He's literally going to try to line up the line on his map with the T20, and he takes like a really reasonable blind shot towards the T20, trying to get the one shot there or something. Unfortunately, the shot goes low, but it's the type of shot you should be taking in a KV-2 or any tank, really, especially if you're just driving into position. It's like it costs you nothing, and, you know, for a KV-2, it could be an extra thousand damage. So... He gets up to here. Now, this is basically the tank alley of Siegfried Line. He's got a Tiger 1, a T29, and a Tiger 1 with him. He's also got an IS over here, and then if you could take a quick look at his map, he's got a Jagdpanzer IV supporting him, KV-2 behind him, and another KV-2. Now, what he's doing is he's coming over to this position. He can... <laughs> I would never personally do this, honestly, but he comes over here, and basically the idea is to sit on this bunker, and he's looking for shots on people crossing. You can tell this because he's aiming not on the corner, but literally in the middle of the angle. And then as he's doing this, an IS-2M appears. So he takes the shot, because the guy just drives across the open, and he does 400 damage. Now, his teammate over here pokes, and this guy gets rocked by the IS and the IS-2M. And so because he actually goes and takes the hit, KK-2310 is literally just going to sit right here. And uh, even though this IS-2M is staring at him, for whatever reason, the IS-2M doesn't shoot him. So he takes the shot, and unfortunately that one lower rolls, leaves the IS-2M on 8 HP. It would be kind of wild to see how this game would have progressed if that IS-2M wasn't in the game. The IS-2M looks at him. He literally doesn't do anything. He's got a bunch of teammates to his right, and uh, he doesn't have to worry about it. Now, there's the IS in front of him, and then he's got... <laughs> A teammate KV-2 right here trying to push him out. Now, I don't know why this teammate KV-2 is trying to get by, but he is, and he does it in a really terrible way. KK is trying to let him do so, and the KV-2, like, pins him against the bunker with the IS looking at him. So the IS takes a shot. Thank God it didn't go in. And uh, that KV-2, bit of a dick. Now, if you look behind him, he's got an MT-25 in his base, but he hasn't noticed that yet. Fair enough. The IS is in front of him. He's going to take that shot, but then he spots an SC-100Y, and bam, he takes the shot, not fully aimed, and actually one shots the guy now he looks behind him he's got the mt25 behind him this is going to be uh what he does here is really intelligent he auto aims the mt25 and while his turret swings around he looks around him and that's something you can do especially if you have a slower turret traverse so he loads he's got the shot on the mt25 he takes the shot 275 meters and it goes in like right in the center of the mt25 he manages to pick up the kill and at this point he's done 1725 damage and he's actually full hp which is pretty incredible now at this point, he's got, uh, well, two people are in cap. So if you're looking at, like, the situation that's around him, KK actually has to go deal with that from his perspective. None of his teammates are really in positions to decap. And what he's doing is he's positioning himself to drive forwards. The problem is this KV-2 is looking at him. So what he does is the second the KV-2 looks away and starts to drive forward, he takes the shot. Really good shot right there, basically. He aimed it for as long as he could. And then in his quest to reset the cap, there's an AT-8 blocking him. So he can't really cross. It would cost him actually a shitload of HP in the KV-2 might get lit on fire, and because the IS is now in a position to reset the cap and there's a minute left, he's in no rush, he doesn't have to take that risk. The at is just perma-tracking him, he falls back, takes a shot, doesn't go in. The at justifiably falls back, and then, for whatever reason, doesn't retake the corner after KK fires. So, he's able to cross, and this allows KK to position himself to start to deal with the three people. Well, there's two people, but there soon will be three people on cap. That's so what he does is he just drives over there. Basically, he recognizes that this right here is unimportant, and he starts to cross. Now, the enemy AT-8 is pushing across to basically intercept him. He auto-aims and shoots on the move. That's great. And then what I really like is he doesn't stick around to fight the AT-8. The main issue is the cap. There's 30 seconds left. And what he's doing is he's trying to reset right here. Now, once the IS gets the, the reset... He then, I'm assuming, this is what he sees. When you look at the map around him, he decides not to go back and deal with the AT-8 and try to save the Tiger, but instead, he realizes it's better for him, his team, if he tries to kill this T-29 and the T-150. The Tiger is going to die anyways, and what he wants to do is he's got a full HP IS and a full and a Jagdpanzer IV right here. He wants to help these guys out. So, takes the shot on the T-29, and once again, he's not going back to base. He's got this Jagdpanzer here, 400 HP. The Jagdpanzer is shooting the T-29, and he's got... 
shot on the IS right now. He's actually going to look around and see in a sec right here. But basically, the focus is on killing the T29, because once the T29, you see, he doesn't even stop, and he he, sh he does have shots. I double-checked when I was watching the replay. He doesn't stop. I think it's really intelligent. He wants to kill the T29 first, so that his teammates can now fight a 3v4, because there's four tanks spotted right now. So after the T29 dies, basically what you'd expect from here is you'd expect a reasonable amount of people pushing up through the F line, and also the middle of the map. So the AT-8 IS, they might, it could just be that everyone pushes through the map. And the position he's going to take is really intelligent. You'd expect the T-20 to start flanking through the K-line. And what he does is he goes up to this spot right here. Now this spot is going to give him really good shots and people pushing up this alley. You can see something actually just fell over there. And because something fell, I assume he saw it. He's just going to YOLO out and try to take the snapshot. Now the IS snapshots and misses. He snapshots and, and misses too. And what you'd do is you'd look at your map here and you'd say, where the hell is the AT-8 and where's the T-20? So you could expect those guys to be behind you. Uh, I don't think he's realized it just yet, but you can see he's trying to fight the KV-2 and the IS. If the IS is moving, he might take that shot. The IS is fully aimed, and he notices immediately there's a T-20 behind him. So takes the shot. It was green on the T-20. Unfortunately, it just hits his tracks and does 400 damage. He's going to poke out. This is to try to proxy, I assume. Like, it should be to try to proxy spot people. It may not be, which is fair enough. It's kind of like, why would you if you're not loaded? But there you go. He's going to poke out, and he sees, spots the AT-8. Now, he's going to shoot the T-20 first. I think this is the right idea he gets the kill on the t20 that guy <laughs> basically a one shot and here i'm gonna pause it to show you the strategy right here so you can tell he's actually a decent player because most blue players i mentor won't be adept enough to kind of do this what you'll see is he's got an at8 in front of him and he's got an is and a kv2 behind him now his best play when he's supported by this guy right here is to try to put these guys in a crossfire so that this guy has side shots. And that's exactly what he's going to try to do. So his automatic decision here, because he can't fight a prolonged fight against the AT-8, is to yol the AT-8. And because the AT-8 makes a huge misplay and shoots, <laughs> you'll see, <laughs> it actually works out. Now you can see the at 8 shooting HC, that's the misplay. And then this IS right here is going to finish off the KV-2, keeping him alive. Now the enemy IS gets distracted. He's not going after the KV-2 right here. And he tries to put the shell underneath the AT-8 so that the HC goes up and kills the guy now this guy's shooting he 47 damage he's going to bounce like multiple ones and basically kk is going to end up on relatively high hp after this result because he's shooting he he can't do anything all he does is manage to track him kk is going to distance him distance himself a bit he takes the shot and that manages to finish the kv2 off now he's got a teammate is and an enemy kv2 uh, like and a full HP KV2 right here. He's full HP as well. The KV2 is looking and he decides not to take that trade right there. Probably really intelligent. What you're going to notice is if you look at the enemy team lineup, there isn't actually a Tiger 1 spotted. So he's pushing in. The main reason, you would assume that Tiger 1 is AFK at this point. If you were in this situation, you'd want to fight the KV2 aggressively because you don't want Artie to be useful, right? Like the sooner this KV2 dies, the worse it is for Artie because Artie, assuming the Tiger's AFK or whatever, is going to have a hell of a time hitting people blind on cap. So he pushes this and what he's doing is he's taking the angle wide. This is, would normally work out, but I think there's a gap right here that he gets spotted through. He's not in a position to notice it, but what he wants to do is he wants to flank the KV2 get the first shot off in the engagement, and he does that, and basically it's it's the right play. He takes the wide angle to try to get that angle. Now, the KV-2 puts a shot into him, but because it was about 10 seconds late, he's just going to YOLO him. Now, this shot has to pen if he wants to realistically win this. And so what he's doing is he's looking for a shot on the engine. That one isn't actually going to go in, so he waits for the KV-2's turret to turn, and when it's green on the flat, unangled part of the turret, he takes the shot. Now, the enemy already just fired, so he's good for a bit, and he's done 5,100 damage at this point. He's got six kills, like phenomenally well played. And this is kind of where uh, he plays it really well. So he gets on cap and his decision on cap, if you're in cap, what you want to do is you want to make sure you don't get blind fired by Artie. Because if you got blind fired by Artie, you would be a one shot to the Artie for him to yellow you or whatever. So if he played it well, it would be the right thing. Now you can see Artie's blind firing at where there could be cover. So Artie took a shot right here. You'd expect him to put other blind shots over here, maybe over here, just trying to reset the cap and damage KK2 whatever the hell his name is. And so what he de decides to do is he sits in the middle of the open. This is the safest position for him, assuming the tiger is AFK. If the tiger wasn't AFK, the way to do it would be to get right behind this building, hug up next to it, and just hope that you spot the tiger and then play ring around the rosy, basically. But because I think he's assuming the tiger is AFK, tiger should be AFK. You can actually see that in chat. This is the right play. Now, 
It chooses these arches to look through. If I was the M12, I'd be coming behind, trying to get into bushes over here or something to reset. So I'm not sure about this arch. But in general, his, his orientation is actually better than mine would be. I would expect Artie to try to flank me. And as he sits here, eventually what's going to happen is Artie's going to get spotted. And the Artie is actually going to get spotted coming through this gap right here. So really ridiculous positioning from the Artie. What he's doing is he's taking the shot underneath the arches. I would have let the guy come around the corner because if that had missed it would have been terrible but he manages to get the shot underneath the arches of the building kills the m12 and now okay this is this is why this replay is amazing he's literally got 5500 for damage the highest damage on what replays above him is about 5530 if just imagine if he had decided to chase down the AFK Tiger, and the Tiger was indeed AFK, this would be a 7,000 damage game because Tigers typically have about 1,300 to 1,700 XP or HP, depending on what they're running. So this very easily could have been a 7,000 7, damage game in a KB2, but instead he decides just in case the Tiger is a bot or just in case the Tiger comes back, he's going to cap out and ultimately, like... I would never have done this. I would have taken the risk because holy shit, 7k damage in a KV2 would be wild. But he played for the win, really intelligent play, and honestly getting here was the win. Now I'll just fast forward it to prove that it was a win. I don't know why he's moving around, but there you go. He managed to win it. So let's go take a look at the end plates before we do. So I wanted to thank Ridge Wallets for sponsoring this video, and then we'll get right on into the end plates. This video is sponsored by Ridge Wallets. Now, Ridge has been a sponsor of my channel for ages, mainly because they actually pay me a shitload of money to do these videos, but I also use their products on a daily basis. You can see right here, I've actually got the wallet I use in real life. This is my carbon fiber Ridge wallet. This thing's kind of expensive, but um, I've had it for like, a year now and I expected there to be quality issues with carbon fiber because carbon fiber is so light and literally I've had this thing for super long and it hasn't scratched there's no scratches on it whatsoever they also have sent me a Damascus steel wallet which is so expensive I'm actually scared to use it but it's pretty wild it looks amazing I would suggest getting this over carbon fiber if you can afford either I can't I'm lucky with my job they also sent me their backpack and this is another product I use of theirs on a regular basis you can see this is a photo of me on Mount Rundle this is supposed to be an eight-hour hike for us we got lost it turned into a 12-hour hike and uh, the whole time I wore the backpack no issues at all and I had a blast doing it so if you want to get these for yourself you can do so by clicking the link in the video description use the code lemming for 10% off It'll also ensures that I keep getting paid by them. That concludes the ad. Let's get right back into the video. All right, so if you literally go on to Watt Replays right now, what you'll see is you'll see this. If you sort it by KV2 and then by damage, the highest KV2 damage game was on Province. I actually watched this replay too. It was really good. But this guy, he played so well and he could have had 7K. You know what I mean? Like he decided not to be selfish and he only got 5,500. But this guy right here, zero damage, zero distance traveled. It, it would have been 7K damage if he hadn't played it safe. But he did, got his team the guarantee guaranteed win when he had it and for that I have to feature it. So that was a master badge, high caliber, the invader and a top gun, wild game. He ended up doing how much damage? 5,504, 7 kills, 2297 base XP which is like I've never ever seen that much XP on anything. I think it's my highest damage in like a tier 6 tank must be like 2,400. Uh, what is my highest damage? Let me find out. There's no way. No, it's 4,000 in the Type 64. I haven't played Tier 6 in forever. My highest damage in low tiers is like 4,000 damage in the Type 64. I think I have uploaded it to replays. And even that in like a light tank where the XP modifier should be a bit higher and I would have got spotting damage was not 2,300 base. So it might be modified by something. I can't see anything here. Like wild result. It would That will always be a master match. So <laughs> yeah, if you... Uh, if you want to see more of my videos, be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button, and I hope to see you around. Later, guys. Bye-bye.